Let's begin 2021 with a prayer. Lord, give us fresh, a fresh start in 2021. Guide our steps, open our hearts, and let us remember always to follow the roads you lay out for each of us. Be in our hearts, our minds, and our souls. Amen. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we have observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all of Jerusalem with him. Isn't this the way it often is? I mean, people in power hear about something that's coming, something new, and whether that thing is for good or for ill, they usually react in one of two ways, either with words of hope or with words of fear. Herod reacts with fear. We don't deal with new things very well, I find, uh, especially in the Episcopal Church. Uh, <clears throat> we like things to go along as they always have. We like things the way that they've always been done. We just really thrive on our traditions. We crave normalcy. We like the known. The unknown? Well, let's just say that it, it makes us a bit uncomfortable and let's leave it at that. And then 2020 happened. <laughs> Normal was gone. Traditions went out the window. Everything changed. And there's that word that Episcopalians really hate to use, right? You hear me? The, word, the world ramped up in every possible way, focusing on the bad, feeding the fear, the panic, the distrust. And now some will say that that just describes the world today, that it's always been like that. And it's always been turbulent and violent. Well, maybe you're right, maybe. But every news agency, political leader and, and person on the street has decided they're gonna get in on the act. There was there has been through this whole year more than a little panic going on, which of course panic means mindless, contagious fear. And come on, we've all been a little, little bit guilty of it. Just a little bit. Instead of focusing on the things that are coming out of this new normal, and you notice how we have to use that word normal because we love normal so much and it's not anymore. Um, anyway, instead of focusing on what is positive that's happened to us in the last year. We tend to focus on what is not the same as usual. Don't get me wrong. The pandemic has killed our loved ones, disrupted and endangered lives, and made us frightened of each other. But there have also been wonderful things that we have learned about ourselves and our world throughout this year, and we need to remember them too. Doctors, nurses, and everyone in the medical field selflessly put themselves in harm's way to take care of us. Without thought, they just did it. People shopped for each other, asked people who couldn't leave their homes if anybody could get them something. People voluntarily masked up to keep others out of harm's way. Even if they weren't sick, they masked up because it was a safe thing to do and it was the compassionate thing to do. And many people are finding new productivity in working from their home. We didn't even realize how much people missed being with their family until they had the opportunity to work there. It's interesting. I think a lot of companies won't go back to business as normal because business has changed and that's not bad. But every news story during the year, 
at least everyone that I was watching, seemed to stoke our fear, to, to ratchet up the volume of what was going on, and we couldn't look away. But Christ is born. He's born anew again this year in 2021, and we can't remain tethered to our fear. We know where Herod's fear took him. Do we remember? Yes, the slaughter of the innocents. Herod decided it was better to kill every firstborn child in, in Bethlehem than it was to just see where it went. We do slip so quickly into fear when something disrupts or out, sends us, gives us the sense that things are not normal anymore because it might bring change and change makes us uncomfortable. So when we're uncomfortable, it's more important than ever to follow Jesus. As we celebrate this year, the birth of this baby in Bethlehem, once again, we're called to remember that Jesus's birth gave birth to a new order. That's the thing that scared Herod the most, I think. His order, the order that he knew that kept rich, powerful men in charge, was going to be compromised. Jesus' birth meant that people everywhere would never accept again that some people were better than other people just because of how they were born. Jesus raised up even the lowest. Jesus' birth meant that all things were being made new. Every moment with every breath, we can choose not to love, which often feels safer and, and even justified, or we can choose to love, which often requires much more bravery. This baby, the savior we follow, Jesus, modeled outrageous, generous love in a way that made the world sit up and take notice of this radical, unusual, unlikely way of being. Can we be a beacon of hope in the face of the panic in the world today? Can we remain focused on Jesus, give him homage like the Magi did in the face of everything that consumes the news cycle? I think we can. The Magi, the wise sages who came to see this baby, knew what was coming, a new realm of God, an era that holds up peace instead of violence, a world where hungry people, street people as we dismissively call them, are fed. This baby ushers in a time where the poor are not talked about as lazy, worthless creatures, but who were instead raised up as worthy followers. In this world that contains the wisest in the land and the baby in the manger, fear will die and justice will become a reality for everyone, not just for some. Love for all will shine like a beacon and attract everyone to its light. Amen.